in case some of you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, the bed they have is, my wife is here, and the bed they have is here. And so I just happened to take a picture of her last year, fully clothed, and trying to get in the bed, and now she won't do it. So it, it's all right, but I just want to say thank you for the house again. Move back to us. It is amazing how God begins to put a series of messages together. I came here with 23 messages to pick something and go with it. And, and Saturday, uh, uh, life began to change. The uh, sermons began to change. And, and, and I kept wondering why so many different things and things are falling in alignment. Some of you guys have talked with me. But today here in Poto, my wife and I went out to what you guys would call lunch. I, again, I, I call it communion. And... We were at the Western Sizzling, and uh, I was going up to get some food, and somebody walked up and tapped me on the shoulder and turned around. It was a gentleman who I have not met, and he doesn't know me. He said, the Lord just told me to come pray for you. And I was wearing shorts. I have a bad leg. I have a, a leg that uh, is blood clot ridden. And God's been doing some good things through it, with it. And he began to pray with me. Now, I didn't know him. But boy, that fit good. That fit really good into the sermon. Amen. It's about obeying God on all things and, and listening on all things. Today, the pastor and his wife invited me into their home again and fed me chicken, <laughs> which is right up there with manna. It really is. Which, by the way, I noticed when that guy came and prayed for me, I was standing right in front of the chicken there, Western Sizzling. So I know that was a double blessing. But a phenomenon happened at their house. I got to share with you. Phenomenon happened. Now I like multiple choice. I do. I love multiple. Anybody like multiple choice? Anything? You don't even know what I'm talking about. I'll just fit in with you. Well, they bought a cake that had four different cakes with it. Four different cakes in it. Four different cakes in it. And I call that a great multiple choice test. I begin to look at that, and I'm thinking, you know, they're going to say, what piece you want? Well, I want all four pieces. This is a multiple choice thing. But I know I was coming to preach and teach and talk with you tonight, and so I chose nothing. I know. It shocked me, too. It shocked my wife. She goes, who are you? I'm trying to very much work on my weight. If y'all remember, I wore this shirt last year, and it was more like painted on. This year is getting closer to a dress. And so I'm, I'm trying to work it on. Not that I'm going to wear dresses, take that off the internet, but it's something that I'm trying to work on, and, and God has blessed me. I looked at that cake, and I thought, yes, that's closer to Jesus than I've ever been. But no, can't do it. Let's get into the message. I have a few things I want to talk to tonight. If you will turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel 24. 1 Samuel 24. It's in the Old Testament for some of y'all get confused. How are you doing? I saw you last year. I thought you'd been arrested and incarcerated or something. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's looking at me like I'll never come again. And let us begin to read. After Saul returned for pursuing the Philistines, he was told David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 abled men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way, a cave where was there, and Saul went in to do his thing. And David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, and this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give you your enemy in your hands for you to deal with as you wish. And then David crept up unnoticed and cut off the corner of Saul's robe. And that's the end of our reading. You may be seated. I want to open up prayer and let's get going. Let's get going. Father, I thank you once again for being in such a wonderful church, a loving church, a caring church. Lord, Help us, Father, as we dive into the blessings of obedience. Lord, as Pastor said, we're talking about the blessings that come from obedience, total obedience. In your name we pray, amen. Well, here we go. In the last three days, we've been outlining obedience. Tonight, we're going to pick a part of obedience. How are you doing? Are we okay tonight? Do you forgive me? Will you forgive me in about 15 minutes? 
All right, just want to make sure. Make sure we're online here. I love you already, and I can't even say your name, but hey, we're together. Huh? Yeah, you keep saying it, because I'll never get it. I mean, M Lady, yeah. Tonight, I want to talk to you about life scenarios, the scenarios of life. As I go out in the public, I, I am something that I'm never in churches. I'm quiet when I go out in the public. I know y'all are shocked at that. But I'm quiet when I go in the public. And my wife tells me I should be quiet, so I try to listen every once in a while. But I begin to listen to the life scenarios of, of life that happens. We're in this about obedience and listening. How many of you would say right now that some kind of obedience fits in any part of your life right now? Oftentimes, oftentimes as we go through it, we have this conundrum. Follow God with all of your heart and your mind and your soul or don't. Those are the two conundrums. Sometimes in life, things happen. And you begin to wander in doubt. And you begin to look things in life. And the greatest thing is when somebody does something to you. When somebody says that word that you can never forget. Anybody been there? You begin to look at life a little differently, and you begin to wonder about things. And God says forgive, God says work through those things, and God says move to the next level in a relationship. Amen? Amen. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, and I had a teacher uh, that I, I, I didn't write very well, I didn't read very well, I, I, didn't, I wasn't dressed very well, I came from a poor family, and this teacher wrote me. And I remember talking to my pastor about it, and my pastor said, Jesus loves her. Well, she, evidently, he don't know her. Because if he knew her, he had already, phew, you're in hell. And that was a kid. I haven't changed much since then. Uh, you can tell I've had to work on counseling and forgiveness for many, many years. When I got married, I, I, I began to, you know, say, honey, I'm sorry. And she goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm just pre sorry Because eventually I'm going to be there. And 19 years of marriage, I've been sorry every day. It's kind of like at nighttime when you pray, you pray, God, forgive me what I've done and what I'm going to do tomorrow and the next day. And just kind of get that pray thing up there. But how many would say that, that tonight the obedience or forgiving and letting go is a little struggle? Anybody? Come on. Come on. Come on. Raise your hands because people are like, uh, I raised my head. But it's a little struggle. Scenarios of life. I've got a funny video for you. I want you to take a look at it and look at it through the lenses of what is it going to take to keep you, help you serve God with all your heart, mind, and soul? Oftentimes, Pastor. Oftentimes this, and you and I are getting to know each other, and boy, I'm enjoying getting to know you together. You stand here, we make the number 10. And, and so we, I can always say our relationship, our friendship's a 10, you know. I'm trying to get down to where we can be 11, but it's going to take a while. And, and so one thing I appreciate about you is you're just allowing to bounce off of you and, and talk about things. But as a pastor, people always say things and they do things around us, and, and as a as a pastor, you think, boy, I'm going to give you a word. I don't know if it's from God, but I'm going to give you a word. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever, have you ever just wanted to bless somebody? Yeah. You know, that, yeah, I'm going to bless them. You know, as a pastor, I think, as I look at people and they begin to say things to me, I'm like, you know, I can baptize you. <laughs> and, and water's not needed. <laughs> Try that out for size when you're getting upset with somebody and say, do you, you, do you, when's the last time you've been baptized? And then, and then look at them and then say, I can help you. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. At, at the prison, people begin to say things, in my, and they begin to say things that are crushing and bone crushing, and I don't get mad because I think, I'm an ordained pastor. I can baptize you at will. <laughs> We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight, and about King David, and about sometimes, sometimes we want to cut a little something off somebody that hurt us. Anybody been there? In obedience, that's the hardest part about obedience. Sometimes we want to give them a piece of our mind. Well, I know that if I give somebody a piece of my mind, I am withdrawing from insufficient funds. <laughs> and I know that the Lord says, be kind to one another. And that's why we baptize in water. And so... As we get ready to do this, I want you to take a look at this, and I want you to look at this with the eyes of, of what is it about obeying God totally when it comes to people that is keeping me from serving him forever and wholeheartedly and loving and caring. 
I am proud of you that you moved up a few seats. <laughs> yes, because if you'll just move up here, I'll leave her alone. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. Well, let's go to the video. How are you doing? <laughs> Hey, Morty, Morty, give me a smoke, Morty. There you go. I just need one. I just need one. Just give me one. There you go. Just there. I got it. I, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Watch this, Morty. I've been doing this since I was in high school. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Smoke rings, Marty. Smoke rings. I still got it, huh? Watch that. Ah, oh, oh, I tell you, since we were just kids, we said we're going to stop the big things and even the small things in our lives. I say it's not too late. I say we stop today. How about tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> what keeps you from following God? What keeps us from following God? Maybe if we're to look at it, maybe, maybe it's just our fear. Grandpa? Yes, what is it? Grandpa? What is it, partner? Uh, can I ask you some questions? Shoot, Kimasabi. Okay. Um, Grandpa? Yep, buddy. Um... What, what, what does it mean when um, the, the angel, what does it mean when, um, when, when it rains? Well, puppy. Uh, puppy? That means that the... Uh, puppy? That's a little nickname I give you. <laughs> puppy. That's puppy. better than calling you a dog. Okay. What was your question? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> What does it mean when it, when it rains? Well, when it rains, let me see. Grandpa. I tell you what, Buckaroo. <laughs> that uh, that means that the angels are crying. They're uh -huh, sad about uh -huh, something. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, what, does, what does it mean? Why does it mean when when it snows? Well, Chip, it means uh, <laughs> means that they're shampooing their hairs. Mm. Grandpa. <laughs> oh. Oh. Grandpa. Yep. What is it? Their scooter. <laughs> What does it mean? What does it mean when when it thunders? Well, that means the angels had chalupas for dinner the night before. Okay. Grandpa? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Grandpa? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> what what is what is it? Why why do pretty people marry ugly people? <laughs> oh, squirt. Uh, well, that's because love is blind. Mm. But don't talk about your grandma that way. Some new thing you kids are doing. <laughs> Twenty-three skidoo. Oh, this is the part of the skit where I was supposed to segue into something serious. Oh but... yeah. <laughs> You're making it really hard. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, buddy boo. <laughs> Crapa. Come on, princess, you can do it. <laughs> oh. Grandpa, yep. Grandpa, yep. Why, yep. how come, how come when, um, how come every time we see, we, we see those planes, mm -hmm. when they hit those buildings and all those people died, and, 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 if, and, if, and if bad stuff happens all the time, I mean, if God loves everybody, why does all that bad stuff? And sometimes when I grow up, I'm really, really afraid that there's going to be some bad stuff. Now you listen, your old grandpa will spin stories and tell you turtles all day long. But what I'm about to tell you right now is the truth. Since the beginning of time, good and evil have been battling it out. 
but I've read the book all the way to the end. And in the end, God wins. God wins in the end. Wow. What, what keeps you, what keeps us from following God? Maybe it's the way we, we procrastinate the things that we just know are truth. We procrastinate good versus evil. We procrastinate right versus wrong. Hey, hey, Dad. Yeah. Uh, those are not my cigarettes. These are not your cigarettes? <laughs> nah, but you can put them in here. <laughs> All right. That didn't really work out like I planned. <laughs> yeah. What's hey, listen, uh, my buddies are uh -huh. going to see this movie, uh -huh. okay? And I know you and I know about the movie. We talked about it, uh -huh. okay? But before you say anything, uh -huh. before you say anything, okay? Uh -huh. I know, okay? I know that there is some cussing in the movie, uh -huh. okay? But it's just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit, and I know it's not real, uh -huh. okay? And um, there's some violence, okay? But it's just a little bit, just a little bit, and I know it's not real, you right. know? Yeah. And there is some nudity in it, okay? Uh, but it's just a little, it's just a little, and I know it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, can I please go see the movie, please? Please, 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 please. Okay. I, I knew it. You don't ever let me do anything. I don't, what do you say? You can go see the movie. That's awesome. You're the coolest guy in the whole wide world. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you go, I knew we were going to have this conversation again, so um, I decided I would make you some of my famous brownies that you loved since you were a kid. These are, these are my favorite brownies You've in the whole wide world. You've loved those brownies since you were I a love little these. kid. And so I thought I'd just make them for you. You know, I, same great ingredients that I always put in those brownies, yeah. but this time I just added a little bit of something, just a little bit of something. It shouldn't affect the whole batch. It's just a little bit of something. You shouldn't mess with perfection. That's, that's my point exactly. That's my point exactly. Yeah. But I've added the same ingredients that I always have. You got the eggs, the flour, the cocoa. You got the little bit of vanilla. You got the almonds. Same great ingredients that I always put in there. Powdered sugar. Powdered sugar is in there. But this time I added just a little bit of something. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. A little bit of brown sugar, yeah. White sugar. Uh, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, we'll go with that ad lib. Sure. See, but um, <laughs> see, but I added just a little bit of something in there. Just a little bit of something. It shouldn't affect the whole batch, though. Cumin? No. All spice? No. Old spice? No. I can taste a little different. Just but, a, but it shouldn't affect the whole batch, son. It's just a little bit. I mean, yes, same wonderful ingredients, but it's just a little bit of something. What is it? Dog poop. <laughs> Excuse me? Just a little bit, son. It's just a little bit. <laughs> it is dog poop. <laughs> From the big dog or the little dog. From the little dog. Whew. That's a load off. Son, Why would you put dog poop in the brownie? Son, it shouldn't affect the whole batch. It's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. I get it. What? It's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. What? Hey, the next time you don't want me to go see a movie, just say, son, don't go see a movie. Don't feed me poop brownies. <laughs> I don't even want to go to the movie now. I just want to go get something to drink. That better be lemonade in the refrigerator. <laughs> what keeps you from following God? What keeps us from following God? Bottom line, maybe, maybe it's just us. Hey. Hey. Where were you this weekend? Uh, I was uh, at a thing with my church. Oh, that's right, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. should have invited me. I've totally invited you to church so many times, but you never go. You're a total atheist. What? You're a total atheist. Dude, I am not an atheist. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. I just don't believe in God. <laughs> yeah, yes, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Learn yeah. something new every day. Yeah. How was it? Sure, it was good, you know. I mean, yeah. God showed up, stuff like that. It was whoa, good. Whoa, whoa, wait. God showed up? Yeah, God showed up. Okay, humor me, because I don't even believe in the guy, right? How do you know God shows up? What? Like a big white limo pulls up, man? <laughs> Door opens up, fog grows out. It's all like, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, God is in the his hour. Like steps out, oh, bless you, bless you, peace. No, I, I can't explain how God works. It's kind of like a microwave. I mean, I can't explain how a microwave, but we use Please, a microwave. Dude, you know, no. it's kind of the same way, God. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Don't give Why? me that, okay? Why? Oh, I can't explain it. I can't. That's the problem with you Christians. I don't know how to explain God. He's just no, no, there. no, no, no. Here, here, here. It's right here. It's right here. Well, you talked about a microwave. A microwave has a manual. I can read it and explain it to you. Right, right, right. I knew you were going with that. Here's our manual. The Bible. Yeah, the Bible. This is your manual. It's a manual. Yeah. Right, show me. Show, show me where it says how God shows up. All right, well, I mean, um, well, 
I would kind of put me on the spot. I mean, okay, well, John 3, 16. Don't give me John 3, 16. I'm an atheist, and I know what that says. Well, you're putting me on the spot. I mean, I didn't Dude, have to. I that's didn't not have to. a manual. No, it that's is. That's a trophy. It's not a trophy. Why yeah, is it a trophy? You don't even know what's in there. I do know what's in no, there. No, you don't. It's something for you to carry around. I mean, the truth is, Christianity is a joke anyway. It's not a joke because I couldn't give you a few scriptures. It's no, a joke. No, no, Christianity is a joke because Christians don't act like they're supposed to Christ. It, <laughs> Dude, no. <sighs> You know what? It's it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. No, You're it's not a big deal. Give you no, a... it's not a big deal. How okay. You, why? Here's why. Because you and I are the same person. Okay. We act the same. We talk the same. We do the same things. Ask anybody that knows both of us, and they'll say the only difference between you and me is you don't get to sleep in on Sundays, and I do. Okay. So so it, it's it's not a big deal. You and I are the same one. And if you're okay, and then I'm okay. Mister, what does your mom say? Going to hell in a handbasket, right? If I'm okay, you're okay. It's all good. So not fair. Not fair, you say. What did you just call me? call you anything no you called me a name what did you just call me i didn't call you anything yes you did what no you i didn't you said it wasn't fair and i said that's not fair you say oh what do you think i said i thought you called me a pharisee what's that <sighs> religious person that looked good on the outside but was empty on the inside no substance yeah i need to call you that look i don't want to argue with you yeah. Me and some of the guys are going to go see a movie later. You want to come? Sure. I'll come pick you up. Oh, hey. It's kind of a racy movie. You might want to bring your manual with you. Just kidding. What keeps us from following God? You know what that thing is. You know what your, those things in for your students. What keeps you from following God? Bottom line, most of the time, it's just us. May I encourage you, may we just encourage you to keep running the race and finish strong. Thank you. Good video? You know, people say, are you ever serious? Yeah, I go to sleep. I'm serious all the time. It is one of those things where as you begin to look at the levels of obedience, as you begin to look at things in life, if you saw those scenarios, you saw a key obedience factor that wasn't there. Now, let's go back to David. I want to read something to you. Afterward, David was conscious stricken for having cut off a corner now I can't keep up. This is awesome. Pause for technical difficulties. Then David went out of the cave and called out to... Oh, let me... I'm skipping way ahead. Afterwards, David was conscience stricken. This is verse 8. I mean, verse 5. Afterwards, David was conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should so touch a thing... So touch a thing to my master. The Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went along his way. And then David went out of the cave and called to Saul, My Lord, the king. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. And he said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David has been on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into the hands of the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hand on my Lord because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at the piece of robe in my hand. Now, in the obedience factor, there are so many, there are so many areas of obedience. And in obedience we're talking about tonight is that obedience... When you, yourself, has been offended. When you, yourself, have been hurt. And the church hurt is worse than any other hurt ever. A lot of my guys, when I first started Freedom Challenge, Pastor, I had 50 guys, and I asked, how many of you grew up in the church? All 50 grew up in the church. As life has it, a lot of people go to church. But the problems between... Forgiveness and letting go are where we struggle in obeying God. Anytime that somebody says something to us, as I started this with a funny notation, anytime somebody says something to us, I'm going to bless you. And we don't want to bless them, we want to get them back. Anybody been there? Oftentimes in life, when things happen to you, David had a chance and cut off his garment. He wasn't supposed to touch anything. You ever had some people tell you, well, I would have you do this. Well, you should do this. 
Well, you should get them that way. Anybody have that? Raise your hands. Anybody actually acted on it? And oftentimes, oftentimes when a lady's like, me, I'm a, that's me too, ma'am. I did too. People say, you need to give them a, 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 a part of your mind. It didn't take long. And when you begin to act on them, everybody has a way for you to get someone back. But God has a way for you to just be quiet and win them back. Amen? Amen? It is amazing when King David began to realize and got grief stricken because he reached out and touched the Lord's anointed. Who's the Lord's anointed? All of us are the Lord's anointed. When we become to know Christ Jesus and begin walking in him, we begin to have that part of the anointing on our lives, on our soul, and on our heart. And we begin to live a life, and, and we will obey everything except that thing, which holds on to us forever, it would seem like. Now, let's go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. As, as, as Jesus came in to... Jesus and, and the disciples came into the garden. He began to go and pray and weep and, and, and do his thing. He was calling out to God. So we know that the disciples were there. We know they fell asleep. And we know that the soldiers came. The soldiers came. And the soldiers began to do what soldiers do. They began to take part in what they're supposed to do, which is capture Jesus. And so... When, when Peter began to see what was happening, what did he do? He took off the soldier's ear. Now, let's fast forward to the obedience of God. Obedience of God says what? It says, forgive one another, love, care for one another. Yes, no? And so, here is our, Peter takes off the ear, Malchus grabs his head and goes down. Now, He's in the spot where he was functioning for who? He was functioning for the church, for the soldiers, for them. And he went down and he was struck by who? He was struck by people that were supposed to just do the job. That's all he was doing is doing his job. Anybody get hurt just doing your job? Get something said just doing what you're supposed to be doing? And you begin to hold on to that hurt. And God says... Let it, say it with me. Now, why can't we let it go? Why can't we follow that obedience factor? I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to let him have it. Now, the problem with that is that uh, it, it is no longer their problem. It becomes your problem, and you hold on to it forever. In Teen Challenge of Oklahoma throughout the years, my life has been devastated by certain individuals. And I had all the rights pastor to return it had all the rights to return things to people in my 16 years I've learned the art of letting go why because I come to the altar I follow God's principle and his obedient factor in saying I will let go but oftentimes we do not David uh, began to tell Saul I had this I could have had your head basically but then he began to repent and realize you cannot reach out and touch the Lord's anointed. Obedience is not something you can choose. I will do this, but I won't do that. I will let this go, but I'm not going to let that go. Oftentimes in life, as you begin to look at those things and the scenarios of life, we choose certain things we'll obey and certain things we won't. Any, any of you, as you were growing up, you realize, well, it's not that bad. Well, I know the word of God says don't do it, but hey, it's okay. Well, let's go back to David. He was in the cave. He could have ended this whole thing. And now he was repentant. Now, David went on to disobey God. But what made him a man after God's own heart? Come on, this is where it's interactive. He had a repentant of heart. He never left the altar. Keep in mind, you're going to see me sitting on this altar, not because I have to, because I'm trying to point you to in a general direction that sometimes you should go to the altar and never leave it. Now, case in point, if you have a situation, if you are walking through a situation where someone has hurt you, in fact, let's find out who's honest. You okay with this, Pastor? Good, good. Bow your head and close your eyes. Everyone, especially you guys up there, especially you, Baldy. 
How many of you would say, how many of you would say that you are struggling with something that we're talking about tonight? Raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, open them up. So, Pastor, it would be safe to say I'm headed on the right direction. Now, let's talk about it for a second. Here is Malchus. Malchus was just going in to do his job. That's all he was doing. He wasn't going in for any malice and content. He was just going in to fulfill his job. And then someone that's hanging out with Jesus reached out and took his ear off. Now, imagine Malchus. Let's go to Malchus for a minute. Someone that was hanging out with the master that claims to be the son of man and cuts my ear off. And I'm supposed to serve this guy? Are you kidding me? And can you imagine the pastoral counseling Malchus needed? Grow closer to Jesus. No, I lost my ear, but you got your ear back. Grow closer to God. Come to him. No, I don't want to go down there to that church because they're tearing people up. I don't want to go down there and we get a bum rap. But oftentimes we have to go back to the part. Jesus said obey. He didn't give any other qualifying reasons why to obey, but obey so you might be free. Obeying that principle of forgiveness is one of the hardest ones to obey because you have been hurt, you've been destroyed, you've been made fun of, you've had everything happen in your life. And then you're told forgive and go on as new. Well, how can I be new when I feel old? How can I be new when I can't pass by this? God said obey because there is no other way to get past those things in life. David, why are you sitting on the altar? I'm keeping it warm for you. <laughs> because oftentimes it's this way, ladies and gentlemen, and little children. The principle of obedience of letting go and forgiveness is the key ingredient to having a successful life. A key ingredient to moving on and obeying those things. Oftentimes, ma'am, we obey everything else but that. We begin to obey God in all areas, but boy, when somebody's hurt us, you, I ain't doing it. You begin to think those feelings in your mind. I'm going to baptize them. I'm going to baptize them hard. All I got is gravel, but I'm going to do it. But letting go. I shook hands with a gentleman who one day, one day we were, my wife and I were preaching at a church, and boy, they were nice to me. They were loving me. Now, you're funny, which I get scared when people say that because there's different types of funny now. And we began to talk and, and I began to preach. The altar's filled and, and uh, uh, great compliments, great accolades, Pastor, great stuff. Well, we get in the car and I forget my jacket. I don't know why you would forget a jacket it's the size of a blanket, but I forgot it nonetheless. And so I went back in there uh, to get it. And when I went back to the fellowship hall where it was hanging, I heard the pastor talking, and none of it was edifying. Now, two choices. Two choices. Man, you're a double standard person. What are you doing? I'm right behind you. Go ahead, say it again. Or turn around and say, God, forgive them and move on. Which one do you think I did? But I wanted to do the first. I want to go and baptize them. They had a sink. It would have worked. <laughs> so off the altar for a minute. When you get off the altar of forgiveness, when you get off the altar of letting go, when you get off the altar of obedience and listening to God, things begin to happen. All of a sudden, your friends will say, man, do that, do that. King David's men said, kill him. He's put him in. They're always able to tell you what God said, even though he said nothing about that. Anybody had some good godly advice that wasn't good godly advice at all? And people begin to tell you. And it had not come from God. It came from the enemy. God will let you know the next phase. But if you get back on the altar in your own personal life, you will hear from him. He's at the altar. Beginning to talk with you and help you. In these things, when that young man, we well, wasn't young, but that older man, you know, a lot of people say, I'm middle-aged, and they're 55. I've met no 110-year-old people. I haven't. haven't. Haven't at all. 
And so when he came to me, and it wasn't a tremendous thing, ma'am. It, it was one of those things where he said, God told me to come pray for you. I'm like, well, get to it. It is amazing when God gives us things to do, and we do it. He's blessed. I was blessed. How many of you need a blessing of God? Then you have to let go. And you have to follow that obedience principle. Bring your hurt to him so he can take it and walk away from it. But it's the hardest one. That's why we're going to take a few minutes tonight. It's the hardest one to obey, to let go, and to forgive, and to say, you have a new chance in life. Until you realize the part that God gave you a new chance in life. God gave you a new chance to do some great things. But you have to ask yourself tonight, will you follow that obedience principle about letting go and allowing God to heal you? Unfortunately, I met with a 67-year-old lady. Uh, not unfortunately, it was great to meet with her. She had been dealing with some stuff for years. She was unfortunately attacked and things happened to her. And as she began to explain to me, I thought, oh my God, somebody did this to a 60-something-year-old woman. It was 45 years ago. And she still had not let go. And she wanted to follow God in all ways and all possibilities and all principles. But she said, I just can't let go. Like, that presents a problem. Do you know where this individual is? No, I don't. Do you know where this happened again? No, I've forgotten. Then you're the only one holding on to it. The principles of obedience and letting go and allow God to come in and heal you. It's the altar. It's the altar time that has to happen in your life where you come and get things right. Do we always have to go to the altar? Oh, yes, you do. It could be your bedside. It could be your car. It could be anywhere where you can meet God. But the obedience principle, it goes back into this. There are church splits, not because they get along, not because they're great, loving, caring people. There are church splits because they don't follow God's obedient principle of letting go and consoling one another, being kind to one another. As I look at you, ma'am, I don't know you, can't even pronounce your name, but we'll work on it. I see that God has got some great stuff for you, but you got to let go. And you got to follow that principle that says, I am all sufficient for you. You two are going to get married someday as soon as you can remember what she, you know. <laughs> and, 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 and so it, it's one of those things where you have to ask yourself this. Do I want to follow God? What's keeping me from following God in all things? And it usually is obedience. It usually is obedience. I laughed about the cake, Pastor, but cake used to be one of my life-controlling problems. I used to tell people I have mainline cake if I get away with it. But I'm learning to let go of things. Now, here's where we begin the ending of this thing. As I prayed last night about this, because tonight was supposed to be does obedience limit you? It doesn't. That's going to be tomorrow. But here's where we end this thing tonight. In your church and in your life, you have to ask yourself this, because this is a recovery church, and people struggle with recovery. They go to recovery church to recovery, but they keep recovering for years. But you have to ask yourself this. At what point will I go to the altar and recover? Will I stop listening to people who tell you advice that has nothing to do with God? Oftentimes we want to lash out when we should pray out. When we should do those things and follow that principle of come. Now, pastor, I have no problems coming when it's good. When my wife comes and says, dinner time, come on, I got no problem coming. When you and your wife call me and say, food's on there, I'll be there before you shut the door. But when it's time to change your life and to move some things around, we struggle with coming, don't we? We struggle with coming. We struggle with the obedience factor that says, you've got to let go. You can't hold on to those things. You must let go. You must change your projection so your projection in life will be great. God is warning us tonight, I believe, as we get ready to have an altar call, is to follow that obedience principle. Come and leave it at the altar. Come and let go. Come and change the projection and trajectory of your life so that you might go back to your pew with that problem that confronts you no longer there. Now, it's up to you. We're about to open up the altars, but the obedience factor, 
that gentleman, Pastor, that came to me today, it all fits in. I know I'm on the right road here. Is that following God, it's just simple obedience. Just let go. There were two areas I told the pastor about that I've been to preparing for obedience messages in the church. There was one church I went into, nobody disobeyed. Nobody fought. Nobody had any problems. It was a church that was closed down and they sold it. Why? Because they had some problems and nobody could obey and come together. I went to another community. They were quiet. Nobody argued. Nobody said, quit laughing, get out of here. It was a really large community. And nobody had a fight with each other. And nobody struggled with each other. It was a cemetery. So, those places, one place used to be a house of worship, but it closed down because no one got the principle of obedience. The other one's a cemetery. That church, there's no church that doesn't struggle. None. But tonight, as we end this thing, I ask you this question. I ask you this question. It's a valid question, I think. Is in the simple obedience of letting go, of dropping that thing at the altar, what's keeping you from it? Twelve of you raised your hand. We're about to open up this altar. How bad do you want to obey God in all things? How bad do you want to be completely free? Then you must completely obey. To be completely free, you must completely obey. As we begin to close this down, I'm, I'm a preacher, so I'm doing my first closing. When I call the altar, who's going to come down? Number two, are you ready to completely obey and let some things go? Number three, and this is an important one. I prayed for you guys last night. I enjoy being here. But freedom is the key. Freedom is the key. How many people see people come through this church, did great, went off, and now not doing so good? Anybody? We see those things because the obedience is not there. Obedience says let go and allow God to change your life. As I clear the altars, I wonder, as I ask pastor to come up so we can pray with you guys, I wonder how many of you are ready to be free and ready to obey, ready to do those things and let go. Twelve of you raised your hands. You got some stuff we got to let go of. As pastor comes up here with me, as pastor comes up here with me, he had cake that stuff clouds your brain after a while. It does. I wonder how many will start coming to the altar so we may pray. And allow God to show you some things. Altars are open. I'm not asking for any music or anything. Just come to the altars and let's see what God does in your life.